Thanks everybody for joining me. My name is Evan Radisic. I am the Managing Director of the Cloud Software Association. I've got Robert Rand uh, with us here today, uh, Head of Partnerships and Alliances at JetRails. Uh, he's going to be talking about um, this thing that uh, they did last year uh, in 2020, where he essentially signed 40 strategic partners despite being kind of stuck behind a screen all year. Um, he's going to be sharing uh, some strategies he found that worked, uh, some questions that he asked and worked with his partners and as well as kind of setting up a cadence to be able to repeatedly do that over and over again. So I won't get too much into it. Um, Robert, I will let you do a little intro and take it from there. Uh, everybody f feel to free to ask questions. Like it can be a little bit awkward here, um, but just get in there um, and, and ask as we go. And Robert, I'll let you set the stage and uh, go from there. Awesome. So well, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I've been a member of the Cloud Software Association and a strategic advisor for a few years now. Um, my original background in the industry was on the agency side of the house, and I helped to build up uh, a digital agency for about a decade. We were ultimately acquired in 2017, after which point I exited and moved on into full-time partnerships and alliances, uh, first for a multi-channel integration uh, platform and iPaaS integration platform as a service, and for the last few years for a uh, a hosting provider that provides cloud hosting management and uh, and other related services. And uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's of course a particularly interesting topic. Everyone on this call and anyone watching the video afterward is going to have their own unique experiences, both with 2020 and just with how their particular uh, operations are set up, what their individual target audiences are based upon the, the products and services that, that you're offering. So I'll do my best to, <laughs> to dance that dance, but I imagine that there are going to be questions that, that have to do with that. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to, uh, to help as much as I can, uh, certainly through personalizing some of this around individuals. Um, so with no further ado, I'm going to pull up my deck and uh, we'll get to talk a little bit about some of those particular experiences. And I will say that um, I attended zero trade shows last year. Uh, my wife and I welcomed our second child last January. And so I was grounded. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, I was really grounded for the rest of the year. Um, so this was, as uh, Evan suggested, all done uh, through... Uh, through the magic of the internet and uh, distanced communication and efforts. Um, so uh, to break right in, um, talk a little bit about some of the strategies that worked and the strategies that we employed. Um, the first one that comes to mind, um, and maybe as a partnership person, it, it makes me almost feel like a cheat, uh, but I partner internally with our customer facing teams. And so I go fishing with the customer service and sales and tech support teams so that if they're working with someone, um, they realize that a client is utilizing an agency or third party or someone that could act as an influencer, uh, someone that we could engage with on a partnership level that's gold. Um, they already know who we are. Uh, they have a, a feeling for us. Um, that's something that we want to learn about, good, bad, or otherwise, what their experiences are. And we want to enhance those. And we want to work together to grow together. And so uh, you'll see, I added some, uh, some numbers in the slides, uh, just giving an idea of what type of traction in our overall partnership growth we saw uh, in 2020, eight of the partners that we added um, came through that part of the funnel. We're, uh, we're brought to the partnership desk um, by internal departments that, uh, that recognized that there was uh, a company or, or a consultant or individual that, uh, that we should ideally be interacting with, and we were able to come to the right terms. So, um, so that was certainly... Uh, so, something that was impactful on the numbers. Um, like most, I got more involved last year in virtual events and meetups. Uh, and so, you, you know, you'll see plus four <laughs> over here, not quite as many. Um, and I think that in some cases, these were more helpful for 
staying top of mind and staying engaged with existing partners, um, people that I already knew. And I found that depending on what the event was, what software was being used, that had a big impact on what was happening. So I grabbed this. This is actually from a public facing blog uh, where a, uh, a partner organization was announcing the relationship and went as far as to explain because they thought it was kind of cool, just like I did, how we met. Um, we were in a, um, uh, a conference together virtually. And uh, the software being used to manage that conference is called Hopin. And there's a feature set that was being used that um, allowed for what I'll just refer to as virtual speed dating. So there was a, t you know, you would be automatically paired with someone, you'd connect for whatever the timer was for this particular event, five minutes or, or 10 minutes. Um, and then you would automatically be kicked out of that meeting, but it was enough time to meet a variety of people. Um, I, I had that experience over and over. Hopin was my favorite uh, platform <laughs> uh, out of all of them last year because of that feature. I know that some others have uh, have added some similar features, but it worked for me. Um, to to add on top of that, um, because this kind of networking, meeting new people, and getting those new, as I'd say, at bats, uh, is impactful. Um, I also found that swapping introductions became more important. Um, I, I highlighted here on this slide uh, um, the fact that I did take advantage of donut time, uh, of coffee time here through, through donut, uh, through the Cloud Software Association and uh, the Slack channel that the CSA maintains. So I was automatically paired with a variety of, of awesome people, a few of which I already knew, and it was a great chance to catch up with people. Um, and to see how we could help each other moving forward or, you know, just to compare notes and see what was going on. Um, and in a lot of cases, I met net new contacts um, and that was great. But I also really did spend more time um, opening up my, my digital Rolodex and saying, okay, you know, uh, whether they were an official partner or just a friend in the industry, um, you know, I've got this book of partners, you've got that book of partners and contacts. Let's swap some introductions because, you know, we're not at trade shows meeting these people. Let's use that. And so between the different efforts um, uh, in that respect, uh, was able to really move the needle uh, as well and got more out of it um, for something that I, I don't typically or hadn't historically spent a lot of time on. Um, but by making it more of a concentrated effort uh, to <laughs> uh, work through networks that, that I'm a part of and individuals that I'm connected with, um, found that, that those sorts of uh, efforts paid off um, and, and with, with some really good partners. Um, now, of course, uh, you know, I, I can wait for our customer facing teams and I can um, try to wait around for others to schedule events and things that I can participate in, but I wouldn't be able to, you know, get exactly where I want to be without going on the hunt from time to time. And so that was another bigger mover on the board. Um, and so uh, eight partnerships I, I would attribute toward outbound efforts coming from my desk. And that, uh, you know, involves certainly targeting. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more in, uh, with, in a few minutes about some of that targeting and, and figuring out the right personas. But I, f I find that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's like coffee's for closers or you always have to be closing that um, I, I never really want to stop uh, with overall outreach. I personally find LinkedIn to be the best place for me when it comes to sort of warm outreach, but that's not always where I find the individuals. So I use hashtags and groups and keep an eye on what people are, are posting and, and who's commenting on the posts of people that I'm partnered with or that I want to be engaged with. And I, I use those as signals, um, you know, to identify uh, partnership targets. But I also take a look at um, 
you know, just other uh, directories and partnership lists and other things in order to figure out that, hey, look, you know, if I want to be working with more people that work in a particular ecosystem, whether that be, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, big companies out there like Microsoft or, uh, you know, Oracle or um, smaller organizations, more niche, um, you know, in e-commerce uh, where I spend most of my time, um, companies like Big Commerce and uh, Adobe, Magento, uh, that that have those types of focuses. I'll go ahead and check out who's partnered in that ecosystem, who's engaged in other ways, who's in the app store um, or uh, you know whatever equivalent marketplace, and I will purposefully go and uh, and identify who in those companies I want to be connecting with, and go in in that direction. I'll also look at the partner programs of some of those organizations. And so if I see that, you know, I want to partner with these 10 agencies and I see a lot of overlap that they're all partnering with this particular company that provides some non-competing service. That's a great company for me to go to market with if I want to host whether a digital or in the future an in-person event um, or we want to put out an ebook together or something where we're fishing in the same waters. So um, I will look for those kinds of signals and um, it's hard for a week to go by where I'm not adding some new connections and engaged in some level um, of outreach. Now, I had up there four strategies, but um, if anyone asks, you can tell them I'm a liar because I had a little bit more in the end. <laughs> so uh, I did realize as I was crunching the numbers that some of the relationships uh, that were generated came off of long-term relationships that I'd been maintaining. And so those might've been people that I partnered with or had other, you know, other dealings with in past years, um, but had never partnered with the organization that I'm currently with, with JetRails, had never uh, worked with JetRails on that level. And so simply by being part of a community and staying in touch with folks, I found that that continued to be impactful and, and was certainly important. While you always want to be, you know, hunting for what I'll refer to as net new people you didn't know, people that you had no relationship with. Uh, you know, I, I find that sometimes, especially in tech, people move around. So they wind up at a new organization and you have a new opportunity. Maybe it wasn't, they weren't uh, maybe they they <laughs> were part of a partnership team that you were previously working with, um, or maybe they they weren't, but now they are in a position to work with you uh, in their new role at at some new organization. That there's something to it. Uh, I personally, and this is you know more playing it as it lies, but I try to invest time into people and relationships. So. Uh, this morning, a, an old friend that used to be in sales at Adobe reached out that he was looking for his next gig. I made him a couple of introductions to uh, a couple of SaaS companies that are hiring. Um, last night uh, at nine o'clock at night, <laughs> I spent about an hour chatting with the daughter of uh, a friend from an A-B testing company um, that was looking to get hired by a particular agency that he, he knew I had some familiarity with and kind of coached her on what the job might look like and um, on some of the, the unique intricacies. And so, you know, I, we all decide how we're going to use our time and what makes sense. Um, I try to make sure that I'm not completely focused on uh, what's going to pay off today. But I do like to think about partnerships as bigger relationships um, and that's standing in the community. And um, it's not always about a perfect one-to-one -one quid pro quo situation. Sometimes um, it, it's really just about uh, building over time and being able to leverage. Um, and so the, the last item on this list uh, of four strategies <laughs> that turned out to be more, uh, I realized I had to do more with our marketing efforts and uh, us receiving inbound partnership requests that uh, I had a role in, in some extent, in, uh, in making that happen. But um, it's always nice when people come knocking on your door. And, you know, so this partly goes back to staying active in a community uh, where in some of these e-commerce communities, I participate in forums like Quora and other places where I'm uh, posting information and answering questions for 
uh, for organizations. Um, you know, it, it has to do, you know, I, I host the Jet Rails podcast. And so I'm putting out unique content that attracts people to learn more about us and partner with us. Um, some of these things may not have to do directly with my desk, but um, inbound absolutely had an impact. And it wouldn't be fair to say that I, uh, you know, I, I went on the hunt for every single partner that we got. And so it was really an additive uh, process that brought us to the number um, that we received. And I'll also say that uh, I get plenty of outreach that's complete spam. Um, I do try to be selective about where I invest my time and who I respond to. So, you know, when I hear from an agency, you know, from a salesperson that's offering web development for $10 an hour, and they really don't seem to have any understanding of the company that I'm uh, affiliated with or uh, what my goals might be, I could probably tell that this is not going to be worth my time in responding and trying to uh, work my way in with my pitch. Um, but there are certainly other cases where people are reaching out and uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by the, the alignment that I might not have seen it. Their website might not make it clear what the alignment's going to be, but um, spending a little bit of time chatting with people. Uh, it, it all often works. Uh, it is worth noting that while I did throw some numbers in there just to help organize my own thoughts, some of this is murky. Um, attribution is tough because, uh, as I wrote here, you know, did a partner sign up because I had a long-term relationship with them or because we reconnected at a virtual event and the timing was right and they had a need and they perceived the need then? And There's some overlap in some of the ways that I sliced and diced these numbers, but and I think that that's actually important to note because uh, there's more happening there than simply uh, a one-step, single-minded process. It is, in, in my uh, niche at least, uh, a more long-term concerted effort to be a part of, uh, of different ecosystems and communities. Now, we got more partners than that though. So those were the math that we looked at previously were referral partners, were uh, agencies, tech companies, others that saw benefit to engaging with us on a referral level. Um, there are other partners though that we sign as strategic partners or that we engage with as strategic partners that we derive value from and hopefully they derive value from us. Um, you know, we like to see these as, as, you know, again, as relationships where everyone's really benefiting. Um, otherwise, what are we all in it for? And so we were able to bring on some additional tools that became uh, part of our offerings or our stack or something that, uh, that we might be reselling or engaging with um, or uh, a new ecosystem that we were going to support with our technology and, and our offerings. And so, um, so I, we certainly consider that um, as part of the partnership program and it's very important to us. And we also engaged, uh, as I was mentioning before, with some companies on marketing that as an organization, um, we do really care about uh, getting our brand out there in front of certain audiences. And even if we may not, uh, let's say, you know, there's a technology partner that they're offering and our offering, they may help the same users. We may be targeting the same users, but they're too far removed that someone that's talking to this other company about X really isn't thinking about what we offer um, and vice versa. So we might not be in a position to bring a lot of uh, introductions to each other, a lot of referrals, but we can engage in, in different ways. And the, when I came up with these numbers, there are certainly a lot more guest blog posts or podcast episodes or other things that came about. These are ones that I was actually able to peg to companies that continued to do more with us than one thing. You know, it's it's one thing to say we got someone that wanted to give us a guest blog post so they could get SEO backlinks this one time. And that's all, that was the entire relationship or that they wanted to come on the podcast to promote what they do. And that was it. These are all companies and, and organizations that we have found more alignment with and more engagement with than a, a single effort. And so we do stay in touch and we, do engage uh, in, in other efforts. So that's a pretty good look in terms of uh, where did we sign partners now? That 
if you add in all the marketing partners, it's certainly well above 40 that we brought on uh, in 2020. Um, so the numbers are, are a little bit uh, higher than, um, than the initial estimate when, when we kept adding uh, as we ran through the numbers. But, um, you know, it's also important to keep in mind, it's easy to get people to sign paper. Um, if, especially, uh, you know, if, if they think that it's going to be highly beneficial to them, um, what's it, to me more important is finding that right alignment. Um, there were a couple of partners that I identified um, in the uh, in this review that were not particularly, I think, um, active for either party. Um, and not because we wouldn't be willing to be active, but because they probably weren't the perfect fit in the first place. And so that sort of uh, drove their engagement or lack thereof with us, um, that they were interested in partnering up. And the ones that I found that were the least active, um, they, and there's limited data available in some cases, but the, the ones that I was able to derive data, um, my belief is that they signed as partners hoping that we would be able to refer a bit more business to them, um, not really having uh, the most seriousness about engaging in, in more of a, uh, a bi-directional relationship in the short term. And that's always tough. Um, you know, it, it, it's not exactly um, a, a winning strategy for a marriage <laughs> to, to have one party that's basically, uh, you know, very much looking for, for one thing and another party looking for another. And, uh, you know, so you can see how that, that happens. Now, there are the obvious things that we look at when we're trying to identify what could look like a healthy partnership for us. Who are their clients? You know, how large are they? What are the geographic locations? What technologies are they using? Is it a match for what we offer? Um, but we also get a little fluffier. You know, uh, what are their? What's their vision? What are their their goals? Um, what are they trying to achieve with this kind of a relationship? And in general, um, when we, you know, we take our reputation seriously, so we really don't want to partner. Uh, with an organization that has a bad customer service record and that uh, it's not going to make us look very good. Um, and so we, we do look at a few of those things, even if we don't spend a ton of time on it, just trying to make sure that this is healthy for our clients, um, for our reputation, for our brand. Um, in some cases, more importantly, are they really ready for a relationship? Do they have a, a partnership lead or someone else that's going to uh, work the relationship? Are they, do they have people in the correct departments that are going to match up, whether that's sales or marketing or, or other efforts that we believe in their particular partnership category, um, we're going to need to align in order to be successful. Uh, that sometimes you'll find that there's someone in a team that's interested in a partnership, but they they're really not prepared for the roadmap that it's going to take to drive each other's success. Um, and I do like to look as part of that, do they have competing relationships already? As, as the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If they're already in a happy marriage somewhere, I either have to be able to differentiate that, okay, they have something SMB and I offer something more mid-market and enterprise. Great. Now they can cover the spectrum or, um, so on and so forth. I I've got to find some unique selling point that means that uh, for some portion of their users, we're going to make sense because otherwise uh, there's not very far for us to go. And I copied and pasted a couple of samples here of where I could spot in seconds that something was amiss. Uh, the, the bottom one, there was uh, someone introduced to me by a member of our team um, they had uh, reached out on LinkedIn and been chatting with the, this member of our team, and um, they were really hunting for clients. And that's okay. I mean, we're you know we're happy to lead swap and to engage, but they I could tell right from here that they really weren't paying a lot of attention to the relationship, and that that was going to be the first thing that I was going to be looking at. Do they really want to be part of our partner program, or you know are they just looking at us as a a lead service. Um, and I've, there are different situations that are more affiliate driven or uh, that can fit that, that cadence. This wouldn't have been one of them. Um, another one here that I identified that, uh, 
you know, uh, at JetRails, we do service some Shopify users, um, but it's not our core market. Um, we're, to the best of my knowledge, not servicing any Wix users. And so we had outreach from someone that thought that we might be a good fit, but I was able to identify quickly that not the right ecosystems, um, you know, doesn't mean that I won't chat with someone or, or go a little farther, but I'm, I'm not going to allocate a lot of resources in terms of sales, marketing, other things for something that, um, that's low alignment. So, um, so that's all, uh, you know, looking at it and I, I suppose I'm, I'm cognizant that <laughs> as I kind of started off the day with here, um, everyone's needs are a little bit different. Um, but we really do look at uh, investing resources into relationships that make sense. Sometimes um, it's because they're submitting leads, um, because we're getting new customers, because we feel good about it. Sometimes it's because they're not yet, but we feel like there's still a lot of promise there that we're still building the relationship. Sometimes it's because there are other fringe benefits, because our customers are really happy with their service and we really want to be connected with them in some way or another. And so even if it's not really changing our monthly recurring revenue, our MRR significantly, um, there might be some reason that it makes sense. And maybe it has more to do with, with marketing and brand awareness. Um, but we really do try to look at these as uh, more than just a spreadsheet, um, more than just a complete uh, computational uh, relationship because we do recognize that we get more benefit out of a relationship and our clients get more benefit out of our partnerships than, um, than just uh, the number of new clients that we acquire. Um, and so I find that that's, uh, that's really important when it comes time to, uh, to do the math and to consider where are we going to invest time moving forward. Now, I, as I said earlier, I'm always on the hunt. Um, so I, I grabbed this. This was actually from Monday, um, from this this week. So it was fresh in my mind. Um, I saw someone put out a post that I thought was particularly interesting, and I sent a link, LinkedIn connection. I didn't send a personalized message. I didn't suggest uh, exactly what we should do together. Um, I basically didn't show up at, at his doorstep with a sales pitch, but I found a uh, a very interested recipient to that uh, connection request and his he immediate, you know, wrote, how can we help each other? Um, and so I explained, you know, how I found him that, you know, that I, I didn't have all the answers yet, but that we were, uh, you know, as I say, fishing in the same waters, that there was alignment and that I thought that, uh, and we actually had a client in common. And I thought that it would be great to, um, in the long haul, uh, look at this by not being completely uh, pushy or over eager. I, I think in some cases it's helpful. There are cases where sometimes uh, I, I can be extremely direct and I feel that that's the best course of action. Um, in this case, uh, I've continued forward. We've already uh, signed a mutual NDA. Um, we're already looking at multiple campaigns together uh, to drive additional business and uh, it's a great example of where, you know, a few minutes on, on LinkedIn was really, really helpful uh, and drove in um, a, a great partnership prospect that's already flourishing. Um, uh, you, gotta, you have to kiss a few frogs <laughs> along the way. Um, but every week um, I'm out there connecting with new people. And even if I'm not banging down their door with a very specific ask, I'm making sure that... Uh, at least I hope that a good portion of them are seeing the posts that I put out there on social media and places like LinkedIn because we're connected, um, that I'm seeing what they're up to and finding new opportunities to engage with them in specific ways um, because I see that I can then visualize, hey, look, they're doing this or they seem to be really focused on, on that. And now I have something to talk about. Um, now I have an angle that's going to make sense for everyone. So there is a, an order of operations. And of course, you know, you put a lot of time and effort into bringing on a partner. First and foremost, I always want to make sure that they're happy and successful and that my time is well spent there. Um, certainly if people are knocking on my door, I want to take care of them. And, um, you know, like any, 
I consider these, you know, like, like sales opportunities in that sense. Um, you know, first it's someone I've already sold. And then um, it's someone that's uh, knocking on my door and it's hungry. Uh, I'm not going to send them away and let them and let it cool off. Um, from that point, of course, there are scheduled events and trade shows. And I do go out there looking for um, in the ecosystems and niches that, that I engage in, what are uh, the events. And I've actually found in some cases that local meetups have been good. So where I might not have flown out for a lot of events in Atlanta or Austin or wherever else, um, I can now join local meetups within these uh, ecosystems and such and participate just the same. And that hasn't been too shabby either. Um, but, you know, scheduled things, obviously, I do my best to, uh, to deal with. And then, of course, it's being on the hunt. Um, and so uh, I've got a tab open here that probably has 50 agencies and little by little, I'll be, you know, going through and identifying who I'd like to be connected with there and reaching out and, um, and engaging. And so every week um, I'm tackling some of those and continuing forward in those sorts of efforts, as well as um, continuing to be on the lookout for other types of partners that I oversee more than referral partners as uh, as I've uh, shown a little bit of in, in this deck. So um, certainly I'll be looking for other things that would um, enhance the JetRails customer experience or enhance JetRails as a company. Um, and so that's, um, that's a pretty good look. So I didn't come up for a lot of air there. <laughs> I'm sure that there are some questions brewing. Uh, anyone have... Um, Anything that uh, might, they might be able to stump me with? Yeah, I've got a question here um, for you, Robert. Uh, one thing that was kind of burning is, you know, as I kind of listen to this is, you know, what is your conversion rate? Like out of, like for, I guess overall for the 40 plus partners, um, how many would you say you engaged with to get those 40 signed? Uh, I know you said some of them were multiple year kind of people that you've, circle back with, but if you had to put a number or do you track it, uh, mm -hmm. if you had to put a number on it, what, what is the pipeline of um, part, or relationships you started to, to land those 40? That's a great question. And I see one question in the chat and I'll, I'll jump onto that one next. Um, so there are different parts of the funnel. Once I get a partner agreement out, uh, I typically find that uh, I'm going to average it to about, uh, based on historical data, two thirds sign. So if I've spent time basically, you know, pitching a relationship and gotten to the point of sending uh, an agreement to be signed, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to move forward. There are certainly some that are on the fence or that just won't tell you that they're really not very serious about it, or they have to get buy-in within their, their team and their organization. And sometimes there's some difficulty there, but more often than not, if I can get them to that point, I'm in really good shape. Um, I'm going to go forward one step and, and then back one step in terms of the, the funnel. Um, not every partnership winds up paying off. Uh, some very smart people in the, the cloud software association have previously said uh, that Partnerships is um, you know a, a lot <laughs> like gambling. You know you you put you don't put all of your chips on one bet. Uh, you make a lot of little bets, and that's a lot safer. The same thing that uh, that someone in finance would tell you about your retirement or such. You don't buy you know you don't put your entire nest egg into one stock. Uh, you have different buckets and different things, and so um, at any given time. Uh, Historically, 30 to 40% of referral partners are actively referring um, actual clients. There are going to be others um, that are maybe referring, but they're not converting, that the alignment's not quite right, or there's something else going on there that's holding it back. Um, and there are some that just, they go dormant. Um, the partner contact that I had is gone and, you know, they're, there's really no one managing the relationship on their side. Um, any number of things, right? You know, that, that can happen. Um, so I, it is important to note that I don't believe that a hundred percent are ever paying off. And that's part of why we're always on the hunt for new partners. 
it's not only for, for growth, but there's a, a percentage of, I don't know if I would always call it churn, because sometimes it's just we, we dance the dance and we figured out that we weren't good dance partners, that the expectations in some way or the needs more often were in a perfect alignment. Um, stepping back to how many frogs do I have to kiss to, to get some <laughs> partner uh, paper in front of people to, to get some referral agreements or, or other considerations in front of them. This was a very different year. Um, when I'm at a trade show, uh, so last year I was just taking a look at it last night, um, and easily we got a dozen partners off of trade shows last year. Uh, that's a higher conversion rate. Um, there's no question that this was a more difficult year. Um, how many people do I have to virtually meet in, you know, through, I don't know whether it's coffee time or through some like, you know, virtual speed dating at a virtual event or, um, uh, or by hand, you know, outreaching people on LinkedIn. It's a lot. Um, now those things take a lot less time individually, you know, five minutes here, a minute there, but, uh, but the volume, it's kind of like the difference between sending out a batch of emails to a hundred thousand people and calling a hundred people that they're very different response rates. So, uh, even though you're reaching, you know, more people with one, the conversion rate is lower. So I, I don't have an exact on some of those hunting efforts because I don't track every single one in, in CRM or such, because some of them are just, they're not at the point of going into tracking. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a good number. I mean, I, I probably grew, uh, a thousand plus contacts on LinkedIn last year, if that gives you an idea. I mean, so, and some of that's just strategic that, you know, may not be a partnership, but uh, that's going to brew out of that. Like I say, sometimes it's just being part of a community for me uh, and, uh, and playing the field in that way. Now, looking at, at uh, uh, we've got Amir in the chat, um, some activities that I engage with existing partners, and I think that's important. So in 2020, we engaged in a number of activities, and these are individuals. So what, uh, what gets one company excited might be a little bit different than what gets uh, another company excited. Um, so we had a spiff program where we offered uh, a particular bonus. I think we did it twice last year to partners that, uh, that were successfully um, submitting new customers. Uh, and in specific time frames, and so we did that to, you know, at times a year that might have traditionally been a little slower, or um, you know, when we just wanted to spread things out and we wanted to have some outreach. A lot of of our ongoing outreach uh, has to do with marketing. So we invite our partners onto the Jet Rails podcast. We engage in guest blog posting in either direction. We'll provide them content. They can provide us content. You know, following some guidelines, of course. Uh, we have a, uh, an article series that we started last year called Community Collaborations, and we'll go out there emailing um, dozens and dozens and dozens of partners, inviting them to fill out a Google form and submit some, some quotes, some, uh, some content that we can include in an article on a particular topic. We pull together information from a bunch of experts that way, um, and uh, we're able to share that uh, effectively. And you know, put together articles and things around that. And so we do find that um, that that's a lot of healthy stuff outside of just saying every month, "Hey, you got any more leads for us?" Or "Hey, I noticed that the leads are are light. You know, what can we do to move the needle there?" Um, it's important to have those conversations. But if the entire relationship is transactional, there's a lot of burnout. Um, so we do try to look at it um, beyond that now we provide a more technical product. And so for our partners that are more active with us, we've got more engagement on support and, and other things we're co-selling with them and our sales team is highly engaged. Um, and so there are things happening outside of uh, what I control more directly at my desk. Um, you know, I'm part of a team and, um, and that's certainly important. Um, in terms of attribution, uh, for leads that come through some of those marketing efforts and, and additional efforts, it's difficult. 
Um, attribution is painful in some cases. Uh, we, you know, we do our best to properly use um, universal trackers, UTM uh, suffixes and things on, on URLs to track where traffic's coming from, um, to notice certain upticks if it you know, came from a particular domain or a, uh, a, a, per a particular uh, social media activity or something along those lines. Um, but sometimes uh, we just look at overall lift. And so we can see from certain efforts that even if maybe some of the traffic came directly to our site, um, that converted or something else happened, that we saw some overall improvement or activity. In some cases, even toward our search engine optimization, we built some great backlinks and we saw that this page really jumped up in the rankings because of it. And so maybe that didn't drive us a lot of direct business, but through that partnership, we were able to improve our overall marketing standing and, and gain some additional long-term business. Is that the primary goal? No, but I think in, a, in life, a lot of things um, do come together. So um, there are times when uh, we can track a lot through, through uh, marketing channels, but not nearly as often as I'd like. And in some cases, we just have to uh, average out a little bit and we track um, long term the amount of overall activity that we have through these these partner channels and we put a we put ad spend behind it we put um you know co-marketing dollars and other things behind it so we do get to a point where um, we know that a lot of that that content is really strong for us and that that onto itself plays a role in our overall marketing calendar and, and marketing efforts um, in terms of, uh, I see a question from, uh, from Steven, um, identifying strategies that are delivering more engaged partners than others. You know, I mean, first and foremost, it's always about having a partner that has the time and interest to be engaged. It's a relationship, you know, so uh, we offer a lot of engagement and not everyone takes us up on it. Um, and so there is that, that first level of working with the willing, but I would say the community collaboration articles have been good. Um, it's been a great way to stay engaged on a non-sales level. Um, we've been going to bat more to generate leads for our partners. And so we have some initiatives and some marketing efforts where we're investing a little bit more into bringing more leads to and these are generally to our stronger partners, the ones that we know if we bring this client to them or, or this outside organization to them, it's going to reflect well on us. Um, it, it's not something that we typically do for brand new partners, but something that once we have that rapport and we know that we have happy mutual customers, we go to bat. Um, and so that's huge that if you're helping to feed someone, um, it makes a huge difference in the relationship if you're trying to reciprocate, even if it's not a one-to-one -one perfect uh, reciprocation, even if they're gonna bring you more business than you bring them or vice versa. Uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's really beneficial. Um, I know not everyone's always in a position to do that, but uh, as I said, we've been um, hard at work trying to increase those numbers because we find that if we were to, when we poll our partners on what's the number one thing that they want from us, it's not more commission. They don't want us to raise our product prices to give them more. Um, which we're grateful for, and we think that our mutual clients are grateful for, they, um, they want their own success. And so if they're happy with our product and with our, our service and team and what have you, um, if, they're, uh, if that's good, that's great, but they also want to be growing their own MRR above and beyond some kind of a referral payment or fee. Um, Follow-up questions? <laughs> <laughs> Anything I didn't touch on? Robert, how much of this is um, is evolving, right? Like, so, I mean, um, I know you probably pivoted quite a bit, uh, as you said, last year than you would have in prior years. Um, you know, how much of this is fluid, um, particularly around LinkedIn, I think? You know, are you using kind of the same thing, the same strategy, same um, approach that you have in the past, or are you constantly kind of tweaking it? Like, I just want to get a little more specific. Mm -hmm. Like, is there any... Yeah. Are you using uh, any tools to track it, or are you using any any other third party marketing tools to to help you manage and engage with people on LinkedIn or any other campaigns like that? Like, what what is your kind of approach, and how often do you tweak it? So that's a great question. Some of these things, like the virtual events, were very much 
something that, that we really began engaging in in 2020, that they they weren't something that we were spending a lot of time or effort or getting a lot of benefit from before that, um, as I think is the case for most of us. There are efforts that we doubled down on, like the podcast, where we started it in February of 2019, and we really put out a good number more episodes in 2020 um, and did more. We put out more eBooks with partners in 2020 and, and had other, other engagement that was meant to, I don't know if the right term is replaced, but to some extent to fill some gaps from not having the trade shows and not having throwing parties together to invite uh, potential customers and customers alike to, and um, to, to try to replace some of that funnel. And so I, I think that some of the co-marketing efforts did, uh, and, and virtual events really did fill in some gaps. The other efforts, I don't think changed tremendously. It's not that I wouldn't have been on uh, LinkedIn hunting or looking um, within ecosystems at who else is engaged in that ecosystem that might uh, have good alignment for partnership uh, with JetRails. The efforts may, I would say, have increased in 2020 and thereafter uh, without the trade shows. Honestly, I, I think that it takes more effort uh, and it, it took more effort in 2020 than it did in 2019 because in one day at a trade show, I can accomplish so much that going through these other mediums takes more effort. Um, it is a more individualized approach in so many cases of attacking one by one versus sitting down for meals and sitting in, in events and doing, you know, networking and over drinks and doing the things that we're also accustomed to doing. Um, in terms of software that I'm using, uh, I will admit that I know some other folks that are using some really nifty software uh, to do a lot of great things around their, their targeting and, and tracking. Um, beyond, uh, we use HubSpot for our CRM, um, but you know, and I do use certain tools to identify um, certain trends and players and markets. Uh, systems like Built With and uh, Wappalizer and different data, and I, I look at reports from different organizations uh, that you know have to do with up and coming events in certain industries and things, and that's all interesting. But I. I I am not using a lot of uh, software tied to, let's say, LinkedIn directly that helps me to, to target or to run specific campaigns. Um, I have tried a number of paid campaigns through LinkedIn historically. I haven't found it to be uh, all that beneficial for my very specific efforts. And so I've stuck mainly with just organic manual efforts. Uh, that may not be the <laughs> uh, someone out there I'm sure is doing it better than I am, but um, because I'm getting the results that I'm looking for, uh, I, I may be a little complacent, I'll admit. Have you engaged with uh, your partners via LinkedIn, like done kind of co-marketing or co-outreach campaigns through LinkedIn with partners together? Have you done any of that? Um, most of the effort that we place in social media focuses on some other piece of content or some other event. So a, a blog post, an ebook, a white paper, a case study, um, a, um, a, a podcast episode. Uh, one of the reasons that we've liked the podcast is that we tape it with video enabled. And so it's, it's more of a video podcast. And so we have the, the actual podcast that's available wherever you listen to podcasts. But then um, we have video that we're able to use in YouTube and Facebook in full. I'll take snippets of the video and we'll promote those together through LinkedIn and Twitter natively, where you can upload a few minutes, not you know a, a half hour or hour episode. Uh, natively. And, um, and so we find that, that those things work. And that's where, and the same, when we have a community collaboration article or something along those lines, we get to tag all those partners and give them more, um, more kudos and exposure in market and, uh, and more brand awareness. And so the efforts are, um, are usually focused on content because we are looking for how can we bring value and so it's easy for us to, you know, go give everyone some new badge and say, you know, you're now a higher level partner. Nothing wrong with that. But when we can build something that's more evergreen, that, um, that people are going to want to keep engaging with because the content is valuable, because it's helping the end users, uh, that 
makes a lot of sense for us. And, and so that's what you'll often, how you'll see us engaging and, and what have you. Now, again, in, in normal situations, we would be hosting parties together and sponsoring of more events and doing other things together uh, right now. Um, you know, we will then take those pieces of content and we will run paid ads and boost posts and do other things to get them out there. Um, but we're a little bit more focused on the content than the raw connections when it comes to what we do together in places like social media. Um, but we will, uh, our sales teams will work together in some cases to target users together to co-sell and do other things. That starts to fall a little bit outside of partnerships. And in some cases, we do engage in uh, in some forms of partner or account mapping, looking for mutual customers or um, looking for opportunities to make introductions that it would make sense. Um, you know, we're obviously very careful about confidentiality and other things in those situations and how we, we approach certain things. But um, there are cases where those things make sense. I've found that in our particular niche, uh, the times when it works are fewer and farther between. A lot of people like to engage in those activities. Um, it really depends on uh, on the particulars if it's going to work. And I think that's probably a session onto itself, <laughs> account mapping and those kinds of activities. Thanks, Robert. Anybody else uh, got a, any questions? We've got a few more minutes here. Um, you've, got, uh, you've got Robert's attention. So um, if there's anybody else with a, another question, shoot. All right, I think everybody knows what they're doing, I guess. <laughs> um, Robert, thank you very much. Um, we'll give it a wrap, but if uh, if there are any questions, follow-up questions that you think of, uh, Robert is on uh, the CSA Slack, so shoot him some questions, and uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, so thanks for joining, everybody. Um, have a good uh, rest of your day. For more great insights on partnerships and software, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.